Hello, my name is Lynn Herr, and I manage the Sandbox Games on the Breakout EDU website. We so appreciate everyone who's willing to share those games with people in the community. Uh, it's a great, great group that you're part of. So I field a lot of questions from people who have played other teachers' games and uh, are having trouble maybe making the connection to how they would create games to use with their own content or in their own classroom. And this has worked for me to be able to show that to teachers. So I thought I would just share one way that I created a Valentine breakout uh, using clues that I had seen in other games to give you some ideas of clues that might work for nearly everything and cover different kinds of content areas. So I have not loaded this into the sandbox folder yet, but I will do that if there's interest. And what I wanted to start with, so uh, I ran this for a group of about 100 faculty members uh, on the Friday before Valentine's Day, and they were high school faculty members, so I wanted to have some application of things that would work for all content areas and at all different levels. So here's how I took clues that I had used in other games or that other people had created and adapt them for my situation. So the first thing I'll do is if we open up Patty Harju's heart that she made as part of anti-love potion number nine, her Valentine game for elementary kids, uh, one of the things that you see here is that Patty created five sheets each with hearts that the kids had to find these numbers. Uh, I laminated these sheets and they colored them in with a black whiteboard marker. And at the end, they end up with five letters, um, which all correspond to directions on the lock. So they have a south, an east, a west, an east, and a south. Um, then it, they had to notice at the bottom right corner the order that those would go in to be able to open the lock. So that was a great game clue and it makes it easy for math teachers to see that they could really have kids graph almost anything to equate to a clue. So um, that's a way that I took one clue that Patty had in her game and incorporated it into mine. And teachers understood then two things how they could use graphing to create clues, but also that when you're creating a clue for the directional lock, you need both the directions and the order of the directions. So that's how Patty did that in this clue. So that's a nice example of that. Uh, someone also shared MadGab clues uh, within our Facebook community, which I thought were great. Uh, so I just adapted one. MadGab is a board game where you say the words and you're trying to listen to what else they might mean. So this one, duckies bite a door, uh, translates to the keys by the door. And you could uh, use lots of mad gabs. In fact, I went through a mad gab site online and tried to pull any clues that seemed to have good breakout EDU potential. And I have those in a document that I'll add to our general resources. So um, this is just a picture of me that I created in Bitmoji. So you could easily do that as well uh, for you in your own classroom. Uh, also created just, I found an image online and found these top secret labels so every group was handed an envelope that said top secret on the front and inside the envelope was the mad gab clue uh, also there was this sheet and i found this online it has the word valentine at the top and it's a language arts review so when you look at the word valentine how many letters syllables vowels etc and then the folks when they're doing the review sheet, these numbers are the answers that they fill into these columns. And to make that a clue then, I just took my invisible ink pen and highlighted numbers two, four, six, and eight. And later in the game, they found the flashlight that lets them see the invisible ink. And they had to figure out that the numbers of the four digit lock were their answers to questions two, four, six, and eight. And this is an example that I think could be applied again to any sort of content or level where they're doing some sort of review activity and eventually those answers factor into um, opening up a lock. Uh, one of my favorite games that has been shared in the breakout community is Historical Mastermind because I believe that it has lots of clues. Uh, and one of the things that it does is have folks reconstruct an essay, a standard five paragraph essay, so that if you know 
the structure of an essay, you can put it together, and then it has an equation down the right-hand side that uh, leads to a lock. So I took that idea for a clue, found a Valentine story online that I could divide in a way that made it very clear to be able to reconstruct the story, and then I couldn't figure out how to get the numbers on there easily in Google Draw, so I just hand wrote an equation um, that was the same equation actually off of the essay from Historical Mastermind cut these into strips and put that in the envelope that each team got. So that led again to a lock clue. On this other one, the Valentine letter, again, this is based on a clue that Patty Harju created in Reindeer Games, where I first saw it, where it was a, a letter that Rudolph was writing home to his mom, and it contained four numbers that, uh, for the elementary level, the kids just had to figure out that they each represented uh, one place value. So, for example, it said even numbers, 4,000, 500, 30, and four, and the kids just had to put those four numbers together to be able to open a four-digit lock. That clue was adapted by other people uh, for different versions of that game so that they, for younger kids, just wrote the four-digit number in there and the kids had to just figure out to take that four-digit number and put it into a four-digit lock, where for older kids or adults, they wrote out the numbers in words as opposed to numerical digits. So I kind of combined those and in the end I know that I need to edit this one because I had a couple extra ones in here um, that threw some of the folks off. Uh, but I had the number four, I had 100, and I had 2,000. So they weren't in place digit order, so I would say that would be a bit of a more challenging clue. And then my intent for the fourth number was also to include this one whole dozen. So I either need to think about how I um, add up the numbers for the code and include these two ones, or I need to go ahead and um, account, get rid of those. So this was a note uh, taking Patty's model. I made this as a note from one boy to another in the classroom about Valentine's Day. I printed those on brightly colored paper, watered them up, and just put them around each of the trash cans in the room. So that was uh, a clue that again I had uh, created based on another game. Uh, so those uh, are just some ideas of how you might create clues that are easily adjustable to any content area. My best advice is just play as many games as you can because we've got some great game builders in the community who create very uh, creative clues that you could, once you've seen that clue, adapt it to a game of your own. So, happy game building!